Hey there, want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are available on Spotify as well. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for podcasters, I've been able to reach more listeners as well as start earning advertising revenue. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. You are listening to the Career Talk Straight Up No Chaser podcast, where we have blunt, honest, transparent conversations. I am your host, Stephanie Dennis. I have been recruiting for several years, both in the agency world as well as corporate America. I have my master's degree in human resources management, and my passion is helping people find both joy and happiness in their careers. This podcast was created to help people in their career as you deserve to love the work you do and get really excited to go to work. I have some exciting news for you. I have created a Facebook community for the listeners of this podcast to come together and support each other on their career journey. Simply head over to Facebook and search the name of this podcast, Career Talks Straight Up No Chaser, and join. I can't wait to see you in the group. This is a good time to mention this podcast does contain adult language. This is episode number eight, where we talk about resume tips. Let's dive in to these resume tips. Number one is being honest. You have to be honest on your resume, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Do not lie. Do not stretch the truth. Just simply be honest in your resume. Number two is going to be, what's the goal of your resume? Do you want to get a job in marketing? Do you want to get a job in sales? Are you targeting a specific company? Are you targeting a specific industry? Are you targeting a specific boss? So before you start writing or rewriting your resume, figure out what your resume goal is and make sure as you start to tweak and improve and create that resume that you're you're tailoring it to that goal. Number three is I'm going to have you show your resume to someone or several people and ask them what is the first thing that they notice. And whatever that thing is, I want you to ask yourself, is that what I want people to notice right away when they look at my resume? Number four is, is your resume telling the right story? Every resume has a story it's telling, and you want to make sure that your resume is telling the right story. Number five is, if you were to hand your resume to someone who is not in your industry, will they be able to understand it? This is important because there are a lot of recruiters who may not understand or fully understand the industry that you're in and you want to make sure that you're not being overlooked because your resume is too difficult. So as a really silly example, you know, I at one point saw this resume and the title was like 1294 something something operator and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And What I would have rather have seen was mechanical operator and then in parentheses, maybe the technology. And that, of course, I don't even remember what it said because it just didn't make sense. But there was numbers and letters and I'm like, wait, what? Like pause. Nowhere in the job description for the position I was recruiting for did it have any of that weird lingo. So I was really thrown off. So if you were to give your resume to someone outside your industry, are they going to understand it? And number six is matching your LinkedIn profile to your resume. And this one is really key because often people who are looking to hire, whether it's recruiters or even hiring managers, will pull someone up on LinkedIn. And sometimes, unfortunately, the information doesn't match. So typically... I'm going to say someone's LinkedIn profile is going to be the most accurate of the two. So just making sure your LinkedIn profile and your resume tell the same story. 
And number seven is I really recommend that your resume is very concise and to the point. So oftentimes people will have these huge long paragraphs and they ramble and they go on and on and on and I lose interest so fast. So just be sure that your resume is concise and to the point. So number eight is your resume should be clean neat, really organized, and just simple. You want to take out all the clutter, all the extra stuff that's not needed on your resume and just make it really organized, clean, neat, and simple. Number nine is having relevant information on your resume. I will use myself as an example. When I was 16, I worked in retail and I was a I don't know, whatever it's technically called, a sales associate. Um, That is no longer relevant, you know, over 10 years later, you know, well over 10 years later, if I want another recruiting position. Making sure the information on your resume is relevant is really important. You don't want to put jobs and even skill sets that aren't going to relate to the job you're trying to get. So if I did want a new job as in recruiting or in management, my retail sales associate experience, you know, 15 years ago isn't going to be relevant anymore. So number 10 is just understanding the four different types of resumes that there are out there. So there are four different main types of resumes. One is a chronological resume where you're basically listing your most recent position and bringing it back to positions prior. So you start with your most recent. I see some people do the opposite and it's a really big mistake because if the first job listed under your experience section is from 10 years ago, I'm going to think, oh my gosh, what have they been doing for 10 years? Now, if I scroll down further, I'll see your most recent, but you don't want to have that immediate question uh, come into play when someone takes a look at your resume. The second type of resume is a functional resume. And this one is most commonly used when you want to highlight the skill sets that you have versus the experience. So if you are switching industries, this is a pretty common resume to use. You still want to include your experience, uh, but you're highlighting more of your skill set versus your experience in a functional resume. The third one is a combination resume. So this is like if you were to take, you know, the five or six main sections of your resume, your experience and your skill set are equally matched as far as the amount of space that they're taking up. And the fourth one is going to be a targeted resume. This one is really specific to either one company or one position or one leader that you're trying to get the attention of. So let's dive into a few of the more detail-oriented tips I have for you. Number one is as you're looking at your resume and you're looking at the font specifically, it needs to be something that is really easy to use. Number two is if you're going to use color, make sure you use it appropriately. There are some really cool resume templates on websites like Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. And those have some fun colors and they're really neat. And I, and I do really enjoy a lot of those templates. Um, but just make sure that if you're going to use color, it's appropriate. And there's no neon colors. Neon colors is really hard to read. It's really distracting, and I, I honestly, I cringe if I see neon on resumes. It, it just drives me bananas. And the most popular use of color in a resume is just to type it in Word or Google Docs or Pages or, you know, whatever word uh, processing program you're using. A lot of people typically highlight their name and key, like key categories. So education, experience, skills, and then everything under that is um, simply black font. So number three is those same key categories that a lot of people are usually coloring. I would also bold those. Stay away from italics. Italics are really hard to read and it's, it is distracting, but you want to make some of those key categories pop out on your resume. Number four is specific to your contact information. Your contact information 
on your resume should one be in the top half of your resume it should be easy to find I shouldn't have to hunt for your contact information as a recruiter if I want to call you and tell you about a really great opportunity but your contact information is on like page three at the bottom of your resume I'd be like what um, this has happened in especially if I I'm doing a phone interview where it's the, maybe the first time I'm trying to find a phone number for you it can be a little annoying where I'm like, okay, how come their contact information isn't on page one at the, at the top half? I like it right at the very, very top, but sometimes people design their resumes in fun ways. So it's like on the side and maybe in the middle or whatever. So I would say on page one in the top half of your resume, and it's really easy to find. And it should include, so your basic contact information is your name, your phone number, in your email address. Some people include their address. This is really personal preference. Um, some people are a little bit nervous about that from a safety perspective. So if you just want to include your city and your state, that's fine. But it's really important that you have both your email address and your phone number. There are certain times where I can only call someone or I can only email you. And these days, honestly, people's preference is an email anyways. Um, but if I email you to set up a phone interview and you don't have your phone number on your resume and you didn't include it in our email communication, now we have to reschedule because I have don't know way of calling you. So making sure your phone number is on your resume is really important. And the phone number you want people to use during that phone interview should be the phone number on your resume. Oftentimes people will include like a home phone number and then they're not home typically during the day because they're at work for their phone interview. So whatever number is on your resume should be the number you want someone to call for your phone interview. Number five is your education. This one is going to be your college education typically if you have acquired education beyond a high school diploma. So if you have an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, a doctorate, whatever the case may be, your education section should have your higher education beyond high school diploma. Now, if you don't have higher education beyond a high school diploma, your education section is will just say high school diploma. And either way is totally fine. But sometimes people will do high school diploma, bachelor's degree, master's degree, and they'll list everything. And at that point, if you have a bachelor's and a master's degree, your high school diploma isn't necessary. So again, we're going back to relevant information, right? Number six is under your skills section, as you're listing out your skills, all of this should be bullet points. Some people like to paragraph out all of their, their skills. And honestly, it's not easy to read and most people ignore it. Bullet points are really simple. It's really quick to read and it's easy for someone to skim. Number seven is experience. Your experience section is going to have your job history and if you are new to the workforce, you might have your volunteer experience or internships, that sort of thing. Um, biggest thing to mention under this is you want to make sure if you've been with the same company, but you've been promoted several times, that you are putting all of that under one heading. So you have, let's say, your experience and you list the company name and then you indent, right? And then you list all of your different positions you've held with the bullets underneath for, you know, roles and responsibilities, that sort of thing. This is important because oftentimes people will separate it out and it looks like if someone's not paying close attention that they've been a job hopping every year or every year and a half, every two years or however often you've been promoted. We've gone over high level resume tips and we've gone over detailed resume tips and a couple things I want to mention as far as what you should be excluding from your resume. So these are things people put on there, but they should not include on the resume. So number one is graduation dates, unless you haven't graduated yet. And I say this because sometimes people will have a graduation date that is 20 years or 30 years past, which is 100% fine, but I just don't want anyone to make any assumptions based on your skill set and your experience based on a graduation date. Or even the opposite. Let's say you've been in the workforce for 15, 20 years and you just got your degree a couple years ago, which again is amazing, but we don't want anyone to make assumptions, the wrong assumptions 
based on your graduation date. Now, if you haven't graduated yet, you need to include a projected graduation date. Okay, number two to exclude is your objectives. There's a lot of people who include objectives on their resume, which is great because you want to have a goal for the resume. We've already talked about that. However, objectives typically do not help you, but they can hurt you. So I've seen people say, I want to obtain a position within X industry doing X job. And then they'll use that resume to apply to a position in a separate industry not doing the job that they listed and so I they're automatically rejected because it's like well this isn't what they want to do why did they even apply to my position it doesn't help but it can hurt so just take it off and then number three is references or that line at the bottom references available upon request just take that off if I need your references I'm going to ask you for them but it clutters up your resume to have it on there, um, that statement, or having your res- your references on there. And number four is caps. Some people, and I don't understand why, will type things in all caps. Just don't. It looks like you're yelling. We all know that. It looks like you're yelling. The only exception to this is if you're listing a specific business name, and that business name is all caps. Number five is long summaries. So I think I mentioned this before when we talked about your skill set is everything should be bullet points. So sometimes people will have at the top of their resume this really long paragraph and it's just like a summary. And if you think about it, your whole resume is one big summary. So I don't need this really long paragraph that's going to clutter up your resume, usually looks terrible, and I'm not going to read it. I'm just being honest. Recruiters do not read the summaries. We want things bulleted. So if there's something you need to mention, just bullet it out. Make it quick, simple, easy to read. And that kind of goes into number six is paragraphs. Just don't include paragraphs in your resume. It, it's that simple. Um, I think I've, I've hit this point home, hopefully. And that includes like under your experience as well. So some people will put X job with X company and then they'll have this long paragraph. Just bullet everything out. Make it super easy and super quick for someone to read. Those are my tips. We've gone over high level tips. We've gone over more details. I've given you some things to make sure you take off your resume. The last couple of things I want to leave you with is as you're applying to jobs and sending your resume to people, always ensure your resume is in PDF form. You don't know what type of computer they're going to be using and you don't know what type of program they're going to be using to open your resume. So most often different programs don't talk well to each other and different software will actually mess up your resume. So I can tell oftentimes, you know, let's say someone might use a Mac to type up the resume in pages, but I might open it in Microsoft Word on a Windows computer and the formatting is all jacked up. It looks terrible. It's really hard to focus. It's hard to read. So always just put it in PDF and it will keep your formatting and it'll make all of your hard work look neat and nice and easy to read. And then my last step for you is as you're going on your interviews and you're printing off your resume, take the extra time to print your resume on resume paper. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. And nine times out of 10, most of the people you're going to be interviewing with will have your resume. They've already printed it out, but it just adds that extra touch of uniqueness that can make you stand out. If you're going to print on resume paper, you also need to make sure that the uh, the watermark is right side up. <laughs> so oftentimes people will print it backwards and upside down and I'm just like, oh gosh, like if you're going to take the time, just do it right. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Otherwise, just print it on normal paper. So that's it. That's all I have. Those are my resume tips. I hope you found this information both helpful and valuable. As always, thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode. I really appreciate it. You can find more information on this episode as well as show notes at findingthebestfit.com. 
don't forget to join our Facebook group if you are interested in being part of a community that really helps and supports one another on their career journeys. I would be forever grateful if you could leave a review and rating to this podcast so it can help other people find our episodes. Thank you so much again for taking the time to listen to this podcast. I really do appreciate it and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.